Hola amigos, this is Level 12 and today we are going to be talking about my first OC and inevitably fixing her. So, if you couldn't tell by the Dragon Balls, my first ever OC was for Dragon Ball. I started watching Dragon Ball around 8 or 9 years old. I was in like second grade when I first started watching it. And I fell in love with the show and the story and Gohan. And because I wanted to date Gohan, uh, I in more or less inserted myself into the story, uh, just making myself uh, skinnier and cooler and more powerful and, you know, as as your average 8 to 10 year old does when they like a fictional character. So, I don't have any art <laughs> to actually show what she looked like back then, but because I hung on to the idea of her for so long, it's, uh, it's been ingrained in my mind and will never leave my, my eyes. So, a couple hours ago, I drew this, uh, this little mock representation of what she was. So, uh, she was known as a shadow girl. That's what I called her because I couldn't be human, obviously. Uh, and by the way, she is me. We are the same person. Basically, my little eight-year-old mind was like, we're not the same, but I, my my 16 year old mind knows. Yes, we were totally the same. So she, I, this actually wasn't her full outfit. Like she wasn't actually supposed to be wearing this the entire time. If you know, like the orange outfit that Goku wears, or even an outfit similar to Gohan's, that was supposed to be her like common outfit. This was only supposed to be the outfit for when they had that world duel fighting championship thing. It's it's been a while since I've uh, done anything with Dragon Ball, to be honest. Uh, that was supposed to be this outfit, and she was also supposed to have a braid coming out the back of the, the mask, but that obviously didn't happen because I drew this while uh, another video I was pre-recording uh, was uploading and I was listening to Ready to Glare. Uh, so I made this kind of fast. You can also still see, because I'm very heavy-handed, my pencil marks. So what exactly was she? What were her powers? Why was she cool? Why did she exist in this universe? So she was about 8 to 10. That was my peak Dragon Ball uh, love. It kind of started to taper out as I found other anime, but Dragon Ball was really big. Her powers were she could control fire and water because also at this time I really loved Avatar. Now I never made an Avatar OC. Uh, I tried to recently, but I, I just couldn't get into it. Uh, but uh, because of Avatar, uh, she had fire and water powers, and she was an alien. Uh, her home planet, because I was not good at coming up with names or anything, and uh, my little eight-year-old heart just loved Pluto, which I still love Pluto. It's still my favorite. Technically not a planet. Planet. And so she was from Pluto, and her backstory was her mother slash some other female in her, in her life, because I also loved Jace, Dated Jace from the Ginyu Force, trust me, it's great, uh, before defecting to Pluto, uh, were her daughter, my OC, who, uh, because I, my real name, I, I don't want to associate with this character, we're gonna just gonna call her Luna, because I actually have another OC called Luna, another really Mary Sue character, uh, and she was raised on the planet, and she was raised on the planet by talking purple plants. I have no idea where my mind came up with talking purple plants, but they were talking plants and they were purple and only she could talk to them because she was that special. And it, she, this all happened before she, I don't know, made it to earth somehow as a young child uh, and go, she found Goku and Gohan. Uh, actually, no, I actually just now remembered. She was supposed to be also captured in Raditz's little, uh, egg ship thing that he crashes into Earth with. She was supposed to be in there when he put Gohan in there when he kidnapped him, and that's how she entered the mix, and she was supposed to be a year or so older than Gohan, just in general, so she was like his mentor behind the scenes. Also, something I need to mention about the outfit, that's a very bad mock-up. So, where you see the orangish yellow, uh, orangish yellow, orangish red, um, lines, that's supposed to be flames, and she's also supposed to have mesh, uh, stuff on her arms as well, not just in the neck area. Uh, I don't know. It's something really similar to Naruto, but I'd never watched Naruto when I was eight or nine. I just knew it existed somewhat. But yeah, this was my first OC. And it wasn't until, I don't know, 15? Uh, like last year when I really started to reevaluate the OC and I actually started thinking of uh, maybe a story, maybe a better character when I t 
kind of I like reading Dragon Ball fan fictions. I'm just not into the new series or movies and stuff. So I started rethinking the OC and I fixed her and I made her hopefully better. When we shall see the art the art isn't better, but uh, excuse me. The story is better. Hopefully, I don't know. Y'all can tell me, but I tried to fix her. I really did cuz oh my gosh, this was my childhood. So I actually tried harder on the art on this one and we'll get into each individual like drawing <laughs> as we talk about it but this is the general mock-up for Stella the new OC and just in general I want to talk about some design choices uh, obviously so the original OC had blonde hair long blonde hair because I had hair down to my waist uh, for many years and so I did that with her I made her hair long and blonde and she had blue eyes because that is my I was what I thought an ideal girl should look like uh, but obviously blonde hair in Dragon Ball is very symbolic of uh, going into Super Saiyan now Android 18 does have blonde hair I know that uh, but uh, I knew I couldn't just pop on some blonde hair with her especially because I would later cut it so I made it brown and I still kept the blue eyes because I I just love characters with blue eyes and uh, I ended up cutting her hair in her final form because something about a female character cutting her hair really shows a symbolic change in the character it's just it was a lot um so what is her background so uh, Stella comes from a planet of healers and warriors, and you're either born as a healer, where your powers mostly focused on the water uh, purity aspect, and if you're a warrior, your powers focus more on the fire and ice aspect of how you can um, use those elements. And healers actually can't use fire at all, they only have water and the very basic grasp of ice and uh, warriors have can use fire and ice and are not very well versed in just plain water so her planet I called it B126J just because I didn't know how to give it a name and I wasn't calling it Pluto again yeah not doing that uh, and the planet is just it's very much like Namek it was lush green grassy ponds uh, lakes uh, rivers. It was very pretty. It was very peaceful. And the planet's main shtick was helping other struggling neighboring planets. And because of the warriors and their unique abilities, uh, they were very strong, but they weren't um, attacking. They weren't very aggressive like Frieza and his men. And also the healers, they had very special water, and the water could heal basically anything like the water from Avatar, uh, from that, uh, s uh, spring, I don't know. And so Frieza found out about this planet, the water and the strong warriors, and he came and attacked when Stella was about, eh, let's say about 10 to 12, and she had already begun her warrior training, and her father was the chief general kind of guy of the troops, and so she herself was very powerful, much like Vegeta. His father was king. He was very powerful. She and Vegeta have very similar uh, back backgrounds and backstories, so they get along very well. She's a little bit younger than him. Uh, so when Frieza attacked, she was just hanging out with friends, basically. And when they started to attack, she fought back. And because she was very strong, she was able to fend off, you know, the, the little mongrel henchmen that really aren't that strong. But she did get defeated by Zarbon. However, instead of killing her, Frieza, while she was very weak, uh, offered her either to join his forces or he would kill her on the spot. And her friend, Julia... Uh, or Juliana, uh, who is, sh her nickname is short to Jules, uh, agreed for <laughs> Stella, basically, that she would go and do it. Uh, somet and sometimes when I think about this story and write it, Jules dies, Jules lives, it's very up in the air. Uh, but uh, in any event, Stella did end up going to live uh, with Frieza on uh, his planet and trained and ended up joining the Ginyu Force. So she was very strong, uh, especially with Frieza's training. Oh wait, I didn't talk about the design. Frick. So, uh, I thought the designs for the the people would be very like nomadic clothing, like very light, breezy, airy kind of things, but nomads dressed in bright colors and I wanted pastel. 
Uh, so then I kind of switched to more just casual, loose-fitting clothing. It looks like doctor scrubs with the color I chose, and something I didn't mention, which is actually super duper important, is this band. So her people have this, uh, band that they wear, and when it's worn on their arms, it's supposed to symbolize times of peace and happiness and tranquility. However, when they put it in their hair to wear it as, like, a sweatband or a headband, uh, it's symbolizing that there's turbulent times and it's not peaceful. So that's the design behind her. Uh, I referenced some image of a woman in a very loose fitting dress. Uh, I, I just, where the dress was, I cut some pants in it and her legs look like they got run over and one of them looks like a potato. Anyway, so back to the story. Ginyu Force. So, Captain Ginyu wanted her to join, but obviously, uh, she had to prove her worth, so she ended up fighting them and, uh, doing as best as she could. She obviously didn't defeat, like, you know, um, uh, Birder and, uh, I forget the orange-haired guy's name. It'll come to me later and I'll just be like, ah, yes, those guys. So, she ended up joining the Ginyu Force and uh she just fought with them there's this one very big like defining moment for her when they go to this planet and they first they have to kill everyone that's on it second they have to uh, extract the materials from it and she pulls open a door like it's a collapsed house and she just pulls back the thing and she sees a mother and the family and they're all cowering away from her and she's supposed to kill them and she because she's so apathetic and so just done with it she almost does until she like just snaps to her senses when like the kids start crying and the mother is just defending them she realized she can't do that so she makes a promise that if she, she makes a promise to herself that if she can leave this life if there's a chance she will and so before we get any further let's take a pause to stare at this so it looks like she has a bunch of tumors and i think i went the wrong direction with my reference i looked up female bodybuilders because everyone in dragon ball looks like they're on steroids um so i think i should have just gone with a fit female like not super muscular but someone who's obviously toned and goes to the gym unlike me i'm a i'm a scrub also um Legs for days in Dragon Ball, no torsos. I referenced a couple Dragon Ball images just so I could get the, the general idea of the style. And it's legs for days, but torso? Torso? Who knew him? I don't. Hardly any, like, there's so much leg in the Dragon Ball characters and barely any torso. It's, uh, it was so hard to, like, get the proportions correctly with, because I try to do about half torso, half leg. That's my general thing. And you can't do that with their clothing because the clothing fits. Like, you have, like, you're missing a good chunk of your torso and you have extra leg. That's how the clothing works in this universe. And it's annoying. And she looks like she has tumors. So now how does she fit into the current Dragon Ball story? What's her place? So, uh, by this point, she's about 16, 17, maybe 18 on the off chance. She's old teen not really an adult yet but whatever so y'all know if you've seen dragon ball how the ginyu force came and tried to stop vegeta gohan and krillin from uniting the dragon balls and making their wish and who to who that jazz so because she's a part of the ginyu force she goes with them obviously this changes the story because what good oc doesn't <laughs> i know it's still very mary sueish sue-ish in that regard but whatever shut up it's my story anyways uh so she goes with them uh she does the the stupid rock paper scissors and she watches guldo get his head chopped off and then when the orange haired guy whose name i still forget uh is fighting gohan and krillin before gohan basically dies because he gets kicked in the neck or something uh she stops uh the guy from doing it and tries to fight him because it's her last straw she can't watch another child die because she has a soft spot for children and uh she almost fights him but that's when goku comes and stops them and she basically joins him and she just continues on with them and follows them back to Earth. And that's the end of her her gist with uh, Frieza in them. There is some conflict between her and Jace in the end. Like, instead of Vegeta killing Jace, she kills Jace. It's that kind of thing. Also, as you may notice in the drawing, as I said before, in times of turbulence, uh, they wear the ban on their arm. But as you can see, the ban is now in her head. Uh, EA me. 
So, later in life. This is actually, I'm actually really proud of this drawing, and my reference was Gigi, which, again, barely any torso, lots of leg. It's like, either I'm not understanding where their waist are, or they just have, like, teeny torsos. It's just, it's very weird. <laughs> I'm very confused. But I, I'm actually really happy with this drawing. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is her foot looks like it got ran over and her arm looks like it's missing the shoulder bone. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the drawing. The, happier than with, the, the, with all the others. So she goes back to Earth. She, uh, she and Vegeta reconnect, as I said again. They had this thing in common. Their planets were destroyed. They were uh, d different. Uh, d they just got along off and on throughout their time on planet Frieza. It's, uh, it's a very muddled backstory. So she sometimes talks to him, but she mostly just hangs out with Gigi and tries to live, you know, her best life. She kind of wanted to give up her warrior ways after all the stuff she put up with Frieza over the years. Uh, she's wearing her band on her arm again because it's peacetime. She cut her hair because she wanted to cut her hair. She wanted something different. She just hangs out on Earth, living her best life, you know, hanging out. Uh, that's basically it. And I feel like I really redeemed this character from going from me wanting to date Gohan to actually a character who has a good story arc. And, <laughs> oh my lord. It, uh, it's so weird to think about that time in my life where I would go outside in my yard. First of all, just going outside. Uh, much less playing in the yard in the sun. Uh, when I would go outside and pretend to fight uh, Saiyans and the Ginyu Force and just run around till my face was red. Uh, that's what this brings back, those memories. It's very nice. It's very uh, sweet. Uh, and I'm glad I got to revisit it and fix my terrible mistakes as a, as a young child. I didn't have the internet when I was very young. Um, well, I did, but I didn't know about this side of the internet. So, uh, thankfully, uh, I never embarrass myself by putting my young childhood art on a very early deviant art. Anyway, so, that's it for this video. Uh, tell me in the comments, what was your first OC and how terrible were they? Or maybe you had a good first OC because you weren't dumb like the rest of us. I don't know. I feel like OCs nowadays, first ones are kind of not too terrible, at least not as terrible as some of them were. Uh, anyways, um, again, tell me your first OC, tell me what you think about OCs in general, uh, uh, thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more random fandom things, ciao chicos!